Hey guys, welcome to the edition of Shelf Porn. I'm your host, James Smith, and today we're looking at Frank King, Master of Comic Art. This is a, a crazy quilt comic. I'm actually hands-free because it's enormous. It's actually a newspaper size. Let's take a look up close. As you can see, he starts sideways, then goes di diagonal, yet straight at the same time. Upside down, sideways, side to side. Literally crazy. It lives up to the name. Great stuff. All right, let's see what else this magazine has. A newspaper has. Wow, we've got uh, Gasoline Alley from 1921. I believe it was uh, 1916 when the strip really started to hit with people. When the uh, character of uh, Skeezix was introduced. And was adopted by Walt Wallet. The character aged in real time. It was the first comic strip and only comic strip that I know of to actually age the characters in time. I believe the uh, Savage Dragon is the next time that happened in, in any sort of comics. Yeah, kudos to the uh, Billy Ireland for producing this stuff, you know, preserving it and saving it. It's a, a comic book museum in uh, Columbus, Ohio. Really a uh, great place. You should check them out. Oh, logo change. Let's take a look at that. More of a cursive look. And then over here, a more cartoony gag look. Yeah, I actually got this at the uh, comic store in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. It's actually called the comic store. It's been around since the 70s when that was not a, uh, an issue. Uh, it's a wonderful store. If you uh, want, like, Mobius or Alex Toth, they have it. I mean, they, they've got some great stuff there that's virtually ignored by people buying new crap, you know? There we go. Nice solid cartooning, really. He's really uh, telling a story here. His stuff is not funny haha -ha, as much as uh, it's a slice of life. It's a really nice, like, simple design there on these characters. You can learn a lot from looking at these guys. And uh, the last Gasoline Alley strip that uh, is in this magazine is produced here on this page. You can see he was playing with borders and uh, the intro there. Really odd character designs. He didn't go for the uh, the supermodels, let's say. Really nice. All right, should I keep going? The next page is Alley Oop. I guess I'll keep going. Really cool. I've actually never read Alley Oop. I, I'm a uh, aversion to his work. I, I've seen a little bit of the work there. Uh, let's see, this is uh, 1931. Great dinosaurs. Yeah, I've seen a few, uh, a few of his things in like Hogan's Alley and Comics Review. But I haven't actually read it. Here's another Alley Oop. Uh, as you can see, he uh, explained his T-Rex here. It seems to be a regular feature as he uh, describes the pterodactyl on the next page. It's really informative for kids. That's his target audience. Comics are for kids. Don't let them fool you. Here we have yet another Alley Oop cartoon. Thank God that on the previous page it was Pterodon because I have, have trouble pronouncing this one. I'm not even going to give it a shot. It's a really nice layout. The dinosaurs are believable. The cartooning is cartoony, yet relatable. Here we go again. Nice layout. Nice and simple. That's the way to keep it. Nice and simple. Don't be in love with yourself. Don't be in love with your style. Not everything has to be like Crazy Quilt now. 
Oh, let's take a look at today's feature here. Dimetrodon. I've seen this guy. I've had uh, rubber toys of this guy. I've just never known his name. All right, the last of our alley oops here. Let's go uh, up close to his little uh, cartoon of an animal here. Platybellodon. All right. This uh, character looks like he's uh, been in a few scrapes, huh? All right, up next is uh, Tarzan. Special thanks to uh, Mike Richardson of Dark Horse Comics, who actually must own the original, according to this magazine. That's just stunning, really. From the colors to the art itself is really great illustration. Look at that. Look at that. It's really nice stuff. Man. Couldn't hold the candles of this guy. I'm not even going to try. It just is a great, great page. Yeah, if you can get your hands on this magazine, it's really something else. This really looks nice. I'm not sure who the artist is, but they're really kicking butt. All right, this is the last of the Tarzan strips. At least in this issue. Look at that layout of the panel. It's really something else. You look at today's strips and uh, you don't really see anything even remotely like this. All right, the next uh, section is uh, Bronk Peeler, which I'm not familiar with at all. I won't even lie to you. But I have flipped through this. I have seen that this is a staple that he has in the middle of the book there. In the middle of the page layout there. Nothing but a hoss. You'll see what I mean there. He really does this one main panel gag thing. I'm not really gag as much as an illustration. He really really has some nice colors. He knows that this is going to be on newsprint, which is known for being shitty. And he really nails it. He knows what he's doing. Yeehaw. There's the horsey. Wait, is it a horsey? Nay. All right, last of Runk Peeler here. They must have heard my horrible horse pun on this page and they're getting the hell out of here. And being replaced by Stumble In. Hokey title, it's great. I imagine this is uh, Walton Skizik, no, no, I'm sorry, uh, Crazy Cat artist, as they're right there. But I, I'm not familiar with this uh, actual cartoon. It looks like his stuff. But I don't know. Looking at these, I, I don't know. I don't know who the artist is. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, it doesn't really say on the bottom, except that the Billy Ireland provides this uh, to this magazine. Hmm. I'm not sure. It's nice. It's beautiful. Happy New Year! Call me stupid, but I don't get this joke at all. Go away. Go away. Ha ha ha. I don't know. It was 1922. Like a day away from New Year's. All right. Let's jump to Wee Willy Winky's world. The layouts on this are incredible. It's amazing what you can do with only six panels. Just because you're doing comic books, well, I assume most of you are doing comic books, doesn't mean you can't steal these layouts. They have this amazing stuff. Great storytelling, beautiful trees, 
that have their own personalities. Yeah. Last but not least is another uh, Wee Willy Wonky's World. I mean, look at this page. That's a great train. It's only four panels, yet he pulls off some great design. Well, if you have any questions or any contributions to make, uh, feel free to uh, comment below. Rate, review, subscribe, all that jazz. And press the like button. Alright, thanks everybody. Y'all have a good day.